Hello and welcome to the Beauty Know It All. I'm sorry I didn't post last week. If you follow me on Instagram and you look at my Insta stories, I have just had my kitchen ripped out. It started a couple of days after the new year and I've only just about got back to normal. And I know that sounds pathetic, but living without hot water, a sink, a dishwasher, a washing machine, an oven, I just had a microwave in my lounge, living a little bit like a hoarder, intermittent Wi-Fi, intermittent electricity, intermittent computer use. It was a nightmare. Also, one of my cats has run away and I don't know where he is. He's scared of everything. Anyway, that's my excuse for not vlogging last week, but I thought I'd come back with a bang this week and say, if I was working on magazines, well, I am, but if this was a magazine, we would call it New Year, New Skin. But what it really is, is my take on retinol and why retinol is your best friend. And it doesn't really matter whether you're suffering from spots in your 20s, you're suffering from uh, a tired grey skin in your 30s, whether you're suffering from pigmentation in your 40s or pigmentation lines and wrinkles in your 50s, a retinol is the key. It's the gold standard in skincare, not just anti-aging because it treats rosacea and acne and pigmentation as well. And you can have those at any age. And the reason is, is because retinol or retinoids as they're called are vitamin A and vitamin A works as a cell communicator and it works at every single level of your skin. You need to get it into the dermis for it to really work as an anti-ager, but it normalizes blood flow. It breaks up clumps of pigmentation. It causes your skin to be better at hydrating itself from the inside. So you need less skincare afterwards. It speeds up skin cell turnover, not technically an exfoliant, but it does speed up skin cell turnover and your skin slowly acclimatizes to it. It boosts collagen production if it can get down to the dermis and the collagen is the, and the elastin are the things, collagen gives your skin bounce, elastin gives your skin lift. It really is a wonder drug for skin and it's the kind of the only active ingredient along with pink things like salicylic acid and vitamin C that has so much clinical evidence to prove that it really works. But how do you put it into your skincare to suit you? So I'm going to talk about my five favorite ways of using retinol or uh, a form of Retin-A. And I'm going to talk about also how you should step your approach because I don't have sensitive skin. I've talked about it a lot. I've got skin like an old handbag, but even the prescription strength retinol that I use the Retin-A I use causes my skin to peel off and I'm going to drop in some pictures here <laughs> because basically I went to see Kate Kerr, a facialist, late last year and she said to me, you are doing everything you should be doing to your skin. Not surprisingly, I'm a beauty editor, but really you need to get on a prescription Retin-A. It's not really surprising at my age. I shouldn't, you know, I sunbathed in my teens, 20s and 30s before we knew it was really bad for our skin. I always talk about the fact that, look, I've worn an SPF down to here and not here, and look at that. So she said to me, if you're really serious, you need to get onto a prescription strength Retin-A. And she's also put me on the ZO Zyna Badgy regime, which I'm also going to do a separate vlog about, but this one is about retinol. So there are three different forms of retinol, retinoids you can use. The first one is retinol palmitate. And this is what's found in things like um, number seven to protect and perfect. This is the lowest dose retinol you can use because it has to be converted within the skin. It comes with a, um, uh, an oil attached to it. It's sort of its, it's way of ski sneaking it into your skin. So it's got a little attachment of a moisturizer added to it and it sneaks into your skin. But the problem is that it needs to then be converted in your skin. And in the process of conversion, not 100% not of the retinol palmitate becomes retinol, let alone, let alone retinoic acid. And it's the retinoic acid, which is the active ingredient in your skin. And when you buy prescription Retin-A, it's, retin it's retinoic acid. So that's the active ingredient you want. So you start with retinol palmitate, brilliant to use in your 20s and your 30s, almost preventatively rather than actually repairing your skin. Next step, retinol. You'll find retinol on lots of different products. Now here's the guide to buying retinol. And I'm going to talk about my favorite retinols here. Retinol is something I've been using for 10 years. Um, and it is a form of Retin-A that is broken down in the skin. So it's more powerful than retinol palmitate, less powerful than the prescription retinoic acid, but it's still broken down in the skin to retinoic acid. It's between 10 and 20% less concentrated, less effective than retinoic acid 
the prescription. So it still causes some irritation if you've got sensitive skin and it should always be used at night. And the minute you start using a retinol, you need to use it at night. It cannot be layered with anything else. It should not be layered with vitamin C or a, any of the acids, any of the peeling acids like glycolic. So you use those on alternate nights. And the secret is you start off with retinol palmitate. You work up to a retinol maybe once or twice a week. And then eventually you get into a routine of using it every single night or even the nights that you don't use. At the moment, I'm currently using a retinol one night and then my vitamin C from the ordinary another night to target my pigmentation. And it's going on my neck. That 23% ordinary vitamin C is brilliant. It's the best vitamin C product I've ever used. So I'm going to retinol, to, reti to retinol palmitate, to retinol, and then eventually what you do is you work your way up to prescription creams. Now, this is the key to using anything stronger than a retinol palmitate. It cannot come in a tub. It has to come, preferably, in a light, tight, airtight container. Because if you see something that has got retinol in it and it's a screw off top and it's exposed to the air, as great as it was when it left the factory, it's going to degrade. Retinol is seriously, seriously unstable. It can't be around water, it can't be around sunlight, it can't really be around that much heat, which is why you have to wear an SPF every day if you wear it. So you need it in an airtight container. And basically all my favorites are pretty much in an airtight container, apart from one which is super cheap, and this is what I'm gonna tell you about. So let's start. Environ sequence three is actually retinol palmitate. But you can, this is a brilliant first step retinol, retinoid to use. So it starts with sequence one, you go to sequence two, sequence three, sequence four. To be honest, I've had the founder, Des Fernandez, who is an amazing South African skincare scientist and a leading expert in skin cancer. And he looked at me straight away and went, you should have gone straight to four, you'll be fine. But you do need to work your way up if you've got sensitive skin. It's totally non-irritating in my opinion, and it's a great product to use in your 20s and 30s. And I've seen some incredible results with derma rollers. They also sell a derma roller. If you use a derma roller, which is a little roller with tiny, tiny microscope, not microscopic, but I think they're 0.2 of a millimeter long little um, needles, then all that does really is break the dead surface skin cells on the top, the stratum corneum, so it can get through and get into the skin. I've seen amazing results with that. It's a great one to start with. Then I would work my way up to, and you'll not be surprised to hear, it's a Paula's Choice. I love this product. This is 1% retinol clinical treatment. And this is a really nice serum to use. This is the sort of packaging you're looking at. See, no light, no air. You pump it out. Can I tell you, retinol has a smell? <laughs> How do you describe the smell of retinol? I can tell a product has retinol in straight away by the smell of it. It's slightly sort of musty. Does that sound weird? I quite like the smell. Only because I know it's doing my skin so good. Beautiful, lightweight serum. Really, really lovely to use. It's a nice one to use if you've got normal to oily skin. If you've got oily skin, Paula's, Res uh, Paula's Choice Resist Intensive Repairs Cream. Now, I have to admit, I use this during the day if I'm not going out and I'm working at my desk. That's a much thicker cream. Smells the same, same formulation, slightly more moisturizing. Yeah, smells slightly, might be like, slightly like damp grass, or is that just me? I'm gonna end up with it all over my hands, but that's not a bad thing because you should be using retinol on your hands too. In fact, they do a body lotion, which is brilliant. I'm putting it on my neck, I don't want it to go to waste. Here's the one that's breaking the rules, and this is my one complaint about this company, and I have spoken about them so much. The Ordinary. This retinol is absolutely brilliant. It's an advanced retinol 2%. Yes, it's in a dark opaque container, but you kind of don't want something that does that. In an ideal world, this should be in a pump action. And I know why Brandon, the founder, hasn't done it, because these, this packaging is quite expensive. But at that price, and all the prices are below, that is great value for money. And my advice to you is, don't leave the top off any longer than you have to. So take it off, put it back on, pipette out what you need, put it back on. And at that price, this hairline to nipples, 
This is the sort of product that is such great value for money and it's got twice the amount of retinol that this has, so why not? But actually it's gonna go off more quickly, it's gonna oxidize more quickly. Why not use it everywhere? Why not use it all over your chest? It makes perfect sense. And I really love the Dermalogica Overnight Retinol Repair. And the reason I like this is it's a great little tube. It's a quite a rich cream. There you go, like that. But it comes with a little matching tube, which I have by the side of my bed, and I use it as a lip balm, called Buffer. And what that allows you to do is if you start using it, or if you're new to retinols, you mix it 50-50 with a buffer and then slowly you can strengthen, the buffer, buffer is smaller, slowly you can strengthen the amount of retinol you use. Now I have to tell you honestly, I have never had a bad reaction to a retinol in my life. But look at me, Slavic skin, eyes as dark as coal, not my natural hair color, and that pretty much is my natural skin color. If you've got blue eyes, if you're prone to sensitivity, if you're prone to um, rashes or irritation, Take it slowly, retinol palmitate, work your way up to a retinol, or invest in something like The Ordinary, and then maybe just put a drop on at night and slowly work your way up, or even better, the Dermalogica, if you can afford it, with the buffer cream and you can mix them 50-50. So that is one, two, three, four. But this is the gold standard. I smuggle this in when I go on holiday to Mexico. This is Retin-A. This is 0.05% retinoic acid, and this is the stuff that you get on prescription. I could get this on prescription. I know more skin doctors than most people have hot dinners, but um, I, I do. You, you can buy all sorts of fancy stuff at Mexican pharmacists. It's a bit like an American drugstore. I'm in heaven when I'm in a Mexican pharmacist. So this is Retin-A, retinoic acid, on prescription 0.05%. I've also got a 0.025%. So I started at 0.025, went up to 0.05, and then next time I go, I'm going to go to 0.1%. Now this, it comes in a gel, by the way, um, if you have acne, but this is a thick uh, cream. You use, well, you're supposed to use a pea-sized amount. Now look, I've put that out, I don't want to waste that. You instantly want to put that somewhere on my skin because this stuff is gold dust. Um, and I'm gonna put it here, because this is where I need it most, okay? And that's about how much you put over your entire face. Um, it looks really oily, but it's got a weird sort of, it goes in, it goes dry very quickly, and then it sort of dries to quite a flattering finish, which is a pity actually, because let's be honest, all you do after that is go to bed. Uh, you can't go out afterwards, you can't go in sunlight afterwards, and you need to wear an SPF the next day if you start using it. And then three days later, your start, skin starts to peel off and I am still going through the peeling stage. And this is what I've promised myself I'll do for 2017. I'm gonna break through that barrier because it takes roughly two skin cycles to get used to it. I'm using it three times a week um, and I'm using it here to here and it is making a real difference to my skin already. But the first thing is my skin feels drier and tighter. And then three days later, it starts to peel off. Not having any redness, but I go to put on my favourite hourglass um, silicone based cream to powder blush and then I look at it really closely and it's all patchy and horrible and I'm sure it is today and then when I rub it the skin starts to come off which is a bit of a nightmare but essentially what you need to do is you use a really gentle uh, cleanser and then you have to exfoliate off the dry skin rub it off in the shower or something but this time I'm determined to break through the peeling pe peeling pain barrier and stick with it because it really can do all those things for your skin it's clinically proven to reverse the signs of sun damage which is what I've got and to help with acne and rosacea um, and dry skin and poor hydration and patches of pigmentation as well so I'm also hoping it's going to tackle my age spots and guess what? I'm gonna take you along on the journey because I am your human guinea pig. Any questions that you want to ask me about retinol, how it works, what to recommend, if you've used any retinol products that you really like, but they have to be in an airtight, contain airtight container, they can't be in a jar, that's my one rule. Um, 
recommend them below and tell me about your experience with them as well because there are ways around buffering the strength of them because I think everybody should really be using a retinol certainly beyond the age of about 35 younger if you've got skin problems that it, it actually tackles um, and certainly by the time you're in your 40s if you're serious about anti-aging skincare retinol absolutely is essential it's as essential as your glycolic acids and your vitamin c's and your peptides and your antioxidants i promise they are all the five ingredients you need please don't spend hundreds of pounds on magical ingredients from the rainforest or the bottom of the ocean put your faith in science and retinol right that's it new year new skin my resolution I'm actually going to put my face in the firing line and I'm going to go hardcore on my retinol and I will take you along with me. Thank you for subscribing. I'm sorry if I've ranted a bit about this, but I am very passionate about retinols. I really am. And all the details are below. There's a little arrow at the bottom of this and I know I'm teaching people to suck eggs, but every so often somebody says to me, where do I find that product? Little arrow at the bottom, click on it. And I take a lot of time and trouble to write about products and put their URLs in where you can shop them as well. Thank you for subscribing. Um, I uh, interviewed Rosie Huntington Whiteley this week, so I'm going to have to be able to, I'm going to be able to put that up um, next week. She's such a sweetheart. And also I've got a really brilliant app that you can download onto your phone and a site that you can check your age and it tells you what skincare to use. And I'm going to vlog about that next week as well. And I'm going to put a picture of myself and with no makeup on. What am I going to do if they say I look older than I absolutely am? Anyway, thank you for subscribing. Uh, tell all your friends about it and uh, let me know about your favourite retinols.